بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه يجمعين أما بعد There's a wise saying that was said by a psychologist that I want you to think about and then we'll get into our topic. And that saying is as follows. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. That's a very powerful statement, it's very Islamic because there are so many ways of looking at things. And the way you think about things, the way you process things actually changes your reality. So I want to share with you two composing statements that are in the Quran. There are two statements on opposite sides, um, spoken by different, um, well they're on opposite sides of the spectrum and they're speaking about the same reality. So the reality is the same, but the statement is looking at it from an entirely different perspective and that makes all the difference in the world. So the first statement is in Surah Saba, or Surah Al-A'raf. Let's start with the one in Surah Al-A'raf, from verses 7 to 13. This is the story of Iblis, the story of Iblis, when he was commanded to bow down to make sajda to Adam alayhi salam and he refused. What did he say? Ana khairun min. I am better than him. So his arrogance refused him to follow the command of Allah to bow down to this creation. So what does Allah say to him? And there's a long conversation that happens back and forth between Iblis and Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is the story of humanity. This conversation is very important because it sheds light on why we're here and what our life is about. So Allah says, قَالَ اهْبِطْ مِنْهَا فَمَا يَكُونُ لَكَ أَن تَتَكَبَّرَ فِيهَا فَخْرُجْ إِنَّكَ مِنَ الصَّاغِرِينَ Allah says, get out. You will be humiliated. So this is, this took place in Jannah. So Allah finally tells him, okay, get out from here. إِنَّكَ مِنَ الصَّاغِرِينَ So Iblis says to Allah, قَالَ أَنذِرْنِي إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ He asks for some time. He says, give me some just give me some flexibility, some time until the day of judgment you can do what you need to do. So Allah says, Qala inna kamin al munzarin. Yes, you have been given time. You have this time until the day of judgment. And then he's, and then Iblis promises Allah the following. Qala fabima awaitani la aku udanna lahum sirata kal mustaqim. He said, because of um Literally mean because of how you misguided me. Obviously Allah is not the one who misguides. Uh, Iblis took that path on. But because of the situation I'm in, I will be waiting for them on your straight path. Who's them? The progeny of Adam. The story is Adam and Iblis and the whole story of, of Jannah. And both of them were sent to live in the earth. And Allah gave Iblis time and He gave human beings time. So he says, I will be waiting for the children of Adam on your straight path. What is the straight path? Allah promised Adam that I'm going to give you guidance. He didn't send human beings to live alone in this world, but he promised, huda. You will always be getting guidance from me. So that is a straight path. But Iblis says, I will be waiting on that straight path. Thumma I will be waiting for them, I will be behind them, I will be in front of them, I will be to the right of them, and I will be to the left of them. This is how dedicated Iblis promises to be with respect to human beings. And then he says the final thing, and this is a statement I want you to think about. He says, وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ you will not find most of them to be grateful. So Iblis promises Allah, I'm going to do my best to misguide human beings and you will not find most of them to be grateful. So what is he saying in essence? He's saying that most human beings will fall. Most human beings will fall. 
says most of them will not believe in Allah except through shirk. So the fact is, this is the reality. The majority of human beings will fail the test. Or a great portion, aktharuhum, will fail the test. <coughs> Shaitan knows that, Iblis recognizes that. And he said, you will find that most of them will not be grateful. The other thing we learn is shakir. The whole test of this life is whether you're grateful or not, shukr. And we talked about shukr to, in some detail. The fact that that should be the ending of everything in our, in our lives. But the great purpose of life is whether Allah wants to see whether you're going to be shakir. What's the opposite of shakir? Kafir. Kafir or shakir. That's the two sides. So Iblis says, وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ So the majority of human beings will not be shakirin. They will be kafirin. So Iblis highlights that majority and he's very proud of his work. So he says, you will find this majority will not be grateful. So he highlights the majority. That's the reality. Now Allah says, speaks about the same reality in a different uh, surah. And I want you to contrast this with the statement of Iblis. Again, what's the statement of Iblis? وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ Most of them are not grateful. In Surah Saba, Allah is giving advice to the people of Dawood But he talks about the story of Dawood. Dawood was a great prophet. He was given أَلَنَّا لَهُ hadid. The iron was made soft for him. The animal kingdom, the jinn kingdom was subjected to him and Sulaiman, like they're, you know, they're related. But he had tremendous, the whole kingdom, the dunya was subjected to him. And Allah says they were able to make armor, they were able to make great buildings and even statues and so on and so forth. Then Allah says, you know, just highlighting all these worldly favors that were given to Dawood. He says, Irmalu ala Dawood ashukra. O family of Dawood, work in gratitude with shukr. Do everything you need to do in this life with shukr. I'malu ala Dawood ashukra. Then Allah makes a comment about the reality. Reality that most people are not grateful. So Allah is going to say the same thing Iblis said. What's that reality? The reality is majority uh, kafir, minority shakir. So the majority will not be grateful, the minority will be grateful. So Allah is going to say the same thing, but what does He say? وَقَلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِي الشَّكُورِ How few from my slaves are those who are grateful. It's the same reality. But Iblis highlights the majority that are ungrateful. That's who he's proud of. This is what he's highlighting. And when you look at it from that lens, humanity is doomed. Majority will not be believers. But now when you look at the lens, a different lens, Allah is stating the same reality, it's much more hopeful. Allah says, وَقَلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ How few from my slaves are those who are truly grateful. So Allah chooses to highlight the positive aspect of that experience. Iblis chooses to highlight the negative aspect of that experience. Allah chooses to highlight those few that will be grateful, that are successful. Iblis highlights the majority that are not successful. So think about those two statements. <coughs> and when you look at things from different angles, the reality changes. And that's very important for us in our lives. We're all dealing with the same reality. You can look at what's going on in the world. You can look at it from one angle or a different angle. If you look at the world from all the problems that exist in the world, what's happening in Gaza, what's happening all around the world, it seems hopeless. And the reality isn't changing so much, but you know, from that angle, you're going to have this pessimistic way of looking at the world. We're doomed, everything is hopeless, no one's doing anything, there's so many problems, and so on and so forth. And you'll find many Muslims are like that. They're always complaining about the problems in the Ummah. Another group of believers, they see the same reality, but they see every problem as a challenge and as an opportunity in a whole different way of looking at things. So they look at the ummah and they'll say, well, we are a sleeping giant. The ummah has tremendous resources. How many Muslim countries? Uh, you look at, if you total up the GDP of all these Muslim countries, look at all the armies that we have. Yes, they're sleeping, 
But look at the potential that's there. And inshallah, that day will come. We are so many. They can't get rid of all of us. And that victory is coming soon at hand. That's a whole different way of looking at the same reality. And when you look at things like that, your work changes, your attitude changes, and even the reality to some extent changes. So that's the message today. So there are so many great examples from the lives of the Prophet and the companions, how they knew this lesson. The way you look at things changes uh, things as well. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. There's a, you know, Mawlana Islah, he used to tell us this story from Umar ibn al-Khattab's time, and he said he was in the masjid, and he saw one man praying, making dua, and he used to say, Allahumma ja'ali min al-qaleel, oh Allah, make me from the few. And he was so surprised by that dua, and he waited till the man was done, and he said, uh, what is this dua that you're making? And that man, he said, you know, the, because of the reason I'm making this dua, I read this verse, wa qaleelun min ibadi ashakur. So I was asking Allah to make me among those few. So then Omar, he was initially angry, then he became happy and he said, you know what? Kullun nasi a'lam min Omar. Everyone knows more than Omar. So this is a great example of, you know, people look at reality differently. Now, isn't there a great hadith of the Prophet Wasallam? How do you view Allah, Azawajal? Right? Like, how do we view Allah? Allah has 99 names. There's so many aspects of, of the divine majesty. But some of us were so fearful and we look at Allah as the punisher. And some of us look at him as the merciful one. Oh yeah, sure. So what is this car doing? What do I have to announce? So the picture, the license plate is half cut off. So there's a Mercedes. Is that a Mercedes? Okay. P75 SBG. And then there's a Honda F92 SVG and a Mazda M30 MFR. So these three cars are blocking a whole section of the muscle. Is it towards the back or the front? All the way in the back. Okay. <coughs> so, how do you view Allah Azza There's an important hadith in Bukhari and Muslim where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, he says something beautiful. He said, Yaqulu Allah ta'ala, Allah says the following. Allah says, Ana inda dhanni abdi bi. I am as my servant thinks of me. This is Allah speaking. He says, I am as my servant thinks of me. In other words, I am able to do whatever the servant thinks that I can do for him. That's a beautiful statement. It's so hopeful. That means, if you rely on Allah's mercy and you have this attitude, you know what, Allah's not going to let these good deeds go in vain and inshallah I will be saved, inshallah. You know, there's some value to have that kind of positive attitude because Allah responds. And if you continue with the hadith, Allah says, وَأَنَا مَعَهُ إِذَا ذَكَرَنِي I am with my slave when he remembers me or she remembers me. فَإِن ذَكَرَنِي فِي نَفْسِي ذَكَرْتُهُ فِي نَفْسِي if he remembers me and him to himself, I will mention, well, dhakar means mention. If he mentions my name to himself, I will mention his or her name to myself. Who's myself? This is Allah Azza wa Jal. And then he continues, وَإِن ذَكَرَنِي فِي مَلَئِن ذَكَرْتُهُ فِي مَلَئِن خَيْرٍ مِّنْهُمْ If he remembers my name in a gathering, I will remember his name in a larger gathering, a better gathering than the gathering that he is in. So this is beautiful, beautiful hadith, so inspiring. And Allah continues by saying, وَإِن تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ بِشِبْرٍ تَقَرَّبْتُ إِلَيْهِ ذِرَاعًا If that person comes to me, a hand span close to me, I will come close to him by an arm span. I will respond even more. وَإِن تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ ذِرَاعًا تَقَرَّبْتُ إِلَيْهِ بَعْرًا and then he goes on. If he comes to me like a hand span, I will come to him even closer. When atani yamshi harwala. If he walks to me, I will be running to him. So this is Allah Azawajal. You have to have this interactive relationship with Allah. You have to have good opinion of Allah. Husn dhanni billah. That's a beautiful Islamic tradition. And in the Quran, isn't there? Well, dhanna so. Uh, what's the verse? Uh, people have a bad attitude about Allah Azawajal. Uh, no, but, but it's, it's about 
Dhanaso is a term used in the Quran. A bad attitude when it comes to Allah. Yadhunnuna billahi dhanaso. They think of Allah in bad ways. They have a bad opinion of Allah. So Allah will respond in kind. So when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Uh, so this is very important even with Allah Azza wa Now, coming to the life of the Prophet Sallallahu there's so many demonstrations of this principle. So one of the demonstrations is very inspiring is um, how the Prophet dealt with insults. Now, when you have someone criticizes you, that's very hard to bear for most people. When that criticism becomes um, personal, it's even tougher. And now, when it gets so personal that they change your name, they start mocking you, ridicule, that's very hard to bear for any human being. So that's the worst thing that a human being can go through in terms of offense from another human being. You know, any insult and personal and so they used to accuse the Prophet of all sorts of things. But one of the worst things they ever did to the Prophet was to change his beautiful name to an insulting name. So they would change his name Muhammad, which means all praiseworthy one, to Mudhammam, the all blameworthy one. So they used to not even mention his name, they would call him Mudhammam. So there's a hadith in Sahih Bukhari where the Prophet said to his companions, and he was very happy one day. He says, Ala ta'jabina. كَيْفَ يَصْرِفُ اللَّهُ عَنِّي شَتْمَ قُرَيْشٍ وَلَعْنَهُمْ He said to his companion, isn't it amazing how Allah averted the, the blame and the ridicule and the cursing of the Quraysh from me? He averted it from me. In the companion's household, what does that mean? He says, يَشْتِمُونَ مُذَمَّمًا وَيَلْعَنُونَ مُذَمَّمًا وَأَنَا مُحَمَّدٍ He said, there... They're making fun of someone named Mudhammam, but my name is Muhammad. So it's someone else. So he averted, you know, that and put distance between himself and the insults and just made things easier to bear. It's the same reality. But if you look at it that way, it really makes things much easier to bear. And that's amazing, the optimism that the Prophet ﷺ had. We can apply that in our lives when you see all this criticism of Islam. And it's really true. There's so much criticism of, of Islam from, you know, uh, people don't understand Islam. But when you look at it, they're really, these people are miskeen, masakeen, because they're criticizing this flawed conception of religion that they have. And that's the majority of Western attacks on Islam have to do with their own experience with religion. Any student of Islam in the West knows that. Everything they went through with their church and with their flawed experience of religion, they're extrapolating that to Islam and they accuse Islam of being this and that. And so if you think of it that way, they don't really know Islam. Well, all this criticism they have is some religion that they think Islam is, of their own conceptions. When you think of it that way, then you become more sympathetic towards them. You're able to give da'wah in a better way instead of being in this angry, defensive posture when people are attacking your faith. And that comes from the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's a great example. So some people have this victim mindset, right? And the Prophet wanted to lift that kind of victim, victimhood, right? So when you're in the mindset that you're an oppressor, you're a victim, you're oppressed and you're a victim, then you're going to have a certain way of looking at things and you're always, it's always going to come out in everything that you do. So there was an old woman that came to the Prophet Sallallahu and she said, Ya Rasulullah, Udu Allah an yudkhilani al jannah Make dua that Allah grants me paradise. So she was ajuz. Ajuz is very old, incapacitated, someone who has physical ailments, and on top of that she's a woman, so that in those societies that's a double negative because now, you know, these people don't have access. So the elderly, they don't have access in our communities. Um, even to this day, we try our best to make our spaces accessible to certain segments of the population, especially the vulnerable, the elderly, and the women. But to this day, it leaves so much to, to you know, there's so much lacking in all the communities. But these are, this is what this woman represented, all these segments that are usually neglected. So she had this victim mentality. So the Prophet said to her, Inna al-jannata la tadkhuluha ajuz. No old woman will ever enter paradise. So, Fatawalla Tabki, so she turned away, started crying, and walked away. So, and then he called her back. 
he was trying to teach her a lesson. But this is, you know, this is his lightheartedness. First he said, no old woman will enter paradise, ever enter paradise. She became more hopeless, started crying. Then he called her back, he said, look, la tadkhuluha wa hiya ajus. She will, no old woman will ever enter paradise while she is old and senile. And then he recited the verse, inna insha'na hunna insha'a wa ja'alna hunna abkara. We will enter them into paradise renewed and young again, in a young age. So he was trying to change her perspective, how she looked at herself and you know. So, you know, when you're at that age, it's just a matter of time. Your life is almost over. You're about to enter paradise, but you'll be young again. So he was trying to lift her spirits. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. There's an example where it didn't work. And that example is where the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he visited a sick Bedouin on his deathbed. And so there was a man who was dying, a Bedouin. He was on his deathbed, very ill, maybe in his last pangs of breath. So the Prophet came to him and he said, what did he used to say when he used to visit um, sick people? Like he, this is another example of how he would lift their spirits. He would say, La ba's tahurun insha'Allah. Don't worry, this is going to be a purification with Allah's permission. So he would remind people in illnesses that look, this is a blessing for you. It's a purification for you. Don't worry too much about the situation you're in. Either Allah is going to purify you and cure you, or if it's the end of you, this is a means of purification of your sins. So Allah raises your degrees and calls you back when you're pure. So it's a different way of looking at illness. So this man, he said, um, he wasn't having it. So it didn't work with this particular person. So he said, he says something amazing. He said, Kalla. He said to the Prophet, Kalla, no, never. Imagine saying that to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi never. He's advising him with something and he said never. So he said, Bal hiya hummatun tafuzu aw tathuru ala shaykhin kabirin tuziruhu al qubur. He said, no, what really is my illness is a fever boiling in the body of an old man that's going to take him to the grave. So this is what the man said. And the Prophet, what did he say? He said, okay, Idan, that's how it is then. And he walked away. And the man passed away. So just imagine, you're on your deathbed. You can go out in different ways. You can go out like this, looking at things in a negative way. Or you can go out uplifted, thinking of it as purification, being inspired. and So, you know, changing the way you look at things is so important. So important. When you make, that's why when you make dua, you're supposed to make dua in a certain way. In, with the husn al billah. Having a positive, uh, you know, expectation of Allah Azza wa Jal. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu said in dua, la yaqul ahadukum. He advised people not to make the following dua. And I still see people sometimes making dua like this. He says, La yaqul ahadukum igfir li in shit. O Allah, forgive me if you will. Right? O irhamni in shit. Um, o Allah, have mercy on me if you will. O urzuqni in shit. O Allah, give me blessings or give me risk if you will. Or insha'Allah. But he said, the Prophet, فَلْيَعْزِمْ مَسْأَلَتَهُ But you should ask with certainty. So in dua, we never put the word insha'Allah. And you often have people say, that, you know, may Allah give us curing, cure insha'Allah. May Allah, you know, when you have the dua request coming to the masjid, if, uh, such and such a person is sick, may Allah cure him insha'Allah. Insha'Allah doesn't go with dua. Insha'Allah is like leaving it to Allah. When you make dua, you need to be certain. You have to be firm. You have to say, Allah, you are the one who's going to cure him. And you will cure him. Yeah, Allah, cure him. You have the power to cure him. Yeah, Allah, cure him. But you don't put this like, you know, it's like, I want this, if you want. You know, imagine asking your parents for something. Oh, I want this for Eid, if you want. So like, do you want it or you want your parents to want it, right? Like it's, it's, it's canceling out the door. So this is very, very important. There's so many examples in the interest of time. I'll end with that. There's so many examples from the life of the Prophet. What he did in the aftermath of Hunayn, when he was giving camels to those who were new in Islam and some of his senior companions felt left out. How he transformed that situation. What he did in various situations when there are victories or where there are defeats. 
how he was able to turn that around. In fact, the whole seerah of the Prophet ﷺ is a lesson in this, how to think things uh, in a positive light, being optimistic all the time, lifting spirits all the time, changing the way you look at things, even in the worst circumstances in Mecca, in Medina, even difficult circumstances in Medina, he was able to lift spirits and look at things in a different light. May Allah give us that kind of optimism and that outlook. Hada wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.